Hello and welcome to the unit Medium and High Temperature Fuel Cells, where we will cover the main technologies of this type of fuel cells. In this first part, we will discuss about molten carbonate fuel cells. The University of Amsterdam between 1958 and 1960 and the Institute of High Temperature Electrochemistry in Russia between 1972 and 1974 were the first ones that worked on the development of molten carbonate fuel cells. In this type of fuel cell, the electrolyte is composed of a molten, a molten mixture of carbonate salt suspended in a matrix. The electrolyte is formed by a mixture of lithium and potassium carbonates and sodium carbonates fixed in a porous ceramic matrix. As the working temperature is around 600 and 700 degrees Celsius and at a pressure between 1 and 10 bar, the carbonates at that temperature are melted. The porous matrix mean, means that no gas barrier is needed on the electrodes. Conversely, on the outside of the cell, the carbonates are not melted because they are at lower temperature. As they are solid, they provide an effective seal to the cell. The cathode is made of nickel lithium, as in the case of the alkaline fuel cell. Nickel oxide is a semiconductor that, when doped with lithium, increases its conductivity tens of times. On the other hand, the anode is made of nickel. The thickness of the anode ranges from 0.8 to 1.5 mm. For the cathode, it ranges from 0.4 to 15 mm. And for the electrolyte, it goes from 0.5 to 1 mm. The operation of the fuel cell is as shown in the figure. In the anode, the hydrogen that arrives at the catalyst of the electrode is combined with the carbonate groups of the electrolyte in order to form water and CO2. This reaction releases two electrons. In the cathode, the oxygen of the air reacts with the electrons that come from the char and with the recirculated CO2 of the anode in order to form groups carbonate. These group carbonates are those that travel through the electrolyte. This is the only fuel cell that needs to recirculate gases from the anode to the cathode, which makes it, makes it more complex than others. Here, CO2 is separated from the gas mixture produced at the anode by means of a membrane. On the other hand, the inlet air can be preheated by the heat of the exhaust gases from the anode. The problem in this type of fuel cell is that the oxidation rates of hydrocarbons, particularly methane, are very low. Nevertheless, natural gas can be used with prior reforming. This indeed can be done inside the fuel cell, taking advantage of the heat generated by the cell as a result of the strongly endothermic reaction. Apart from hydrogen, CO can also react at the anode by oxi oxidizing to CO2 through the carbonates and releasing two other electrons. However, this reaction has much lower kinetics than that of hydrogen. Therefore, this alternative cell can be powered by natural gas with only a small, a small prior reforming of the gas. The result of the reforming are a combination of gases that do not harm the cell, on the contrary, they can be used. Depending on where the reforming takes place, there are two options. The direct internal reforming fuel cell, in which the reforming is done in the catalyst of the anode, taking advantage of the operating temperature of the fuel cell, or the indirect internal reforming fuel cell, in which plates with catalysts are added inside the cell to take advantage of the heat from operation but reforming before reaching the anode. It is important to mention that in molten, molten carbonate fuel cells, apart from the losses common to all other fuel cells, nerve losses are added. These losses are related to the difference of gas concentration in both electrodes. As we have mentioned, at the anode there is hydrogen, water and CO2. 
at the cathode, oxygen and CO2. It is important that the concentration of all gases is balanced. For this reason, the maximum current density is 150 milliamps per square centimeter, which is equivalent to a cell voltage of 0.6. As for the problems that can be found in this type of fuel cell, there is a gradual dissolution of the cathode because the electrolyte is very acidic and causes this reaction. If the CO2 pressure increases to increase the current gener generation, the environment becomes even more acidic around the electrode. On the other hand, if the CO2 pressure is reduced to minimize the problem, the reaction rate at the cathode, and therefore the current generated, decreases. It is estimated that the CO2 pressure should be between 0 0.15 and 0 0.20 bar. Another point is the construction of the stacks. The stacks are built vertically, like the one that we can see here in the picture, because the ceiling is done with the solid carbonates from the outside of each cell. If they were placed horizontally, gravity, gravity would cause the bottom to melt. This causes the anode to the lower cells to deform and the number of pores, pores to be reduced. And this results in a reduction in the performance of the stack. Additionally, due to the corrosion of the metal elements in the cell, the bipolar plates connecting the cells in series have worse electrical contact with the electrodes. Besides that, carbonates that volatilize in normal fuel cell operation can block pipes when they cool down during shutdowns. The image corresponds to a stack of 350 cells of one square meter of effective area arranged in series. If the fuel cell is operated at 150 milliamps per square centimeter and 0.6 volts, the stack voltage is 210 volts and the current is 1500 amps. The power developed is the voltage times the current, which equals 315 kilowatts. Molten carbonate fuel cell technology is now mature and highly developed. Since 2002, many natural gas fire power generation facilities have been built using uh, the source unit of fuel cell energy. The company reports an efficiency of its plant of 51% without the, waste, the, the use of waste, water, waste heat. As a matter of fact, sales of this technology in 2018 established at 25 megawatts per year compared to 2017. The main manufacturers of this technology are fuel cell energy in USA, POSCO in South Korea, INEA in Italy and FrancoCell in, in France among others. In this figure we can see the fuel cell power plant of 59 megawatts in South Korea. Below we have the molten carbonate plant proposed by FrancoCell which offers an efficiency of 56% and uses ethanol as fuel. With this, we conclude the first part of the unit about medium and high temperature fuel cells.